All righty, we'll make a start. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome back to our Blues From Home program and our Staying Healthy in Lockdown webinar series. Um, the second part of our series airing uh, Monday, 7 p.m. Being filmed ahead of time, um, but still a really... Uh, Really great resource for you guys and thank you for everyone that sent through some questions. Um, a really important topic tonight. So I am joined uh, today by uh, Headspace Frankston um, community engagement worker, Bethany Knight. Bethany, uh, thank you very much for, for jumping on um, as a part of our, our program and, and what we're trying to do with our juniors to keep them engaged and our families, um, you know, parents that would be tuning in tonight, possibly some of our coaches, there might be some of our kids as well. Um, it's really important for us to be more proactive in this space and you've been a terrific resource for our club and me in particular, we had some big plans to do some things. Obviously, you came to the stadium, I, I believe it was in November last year. Um, and we had a right, yeah. It feels a very, very, very long time ago now. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a long time ago, but that was a really massive step for us. And obviously, Wayne was huge in setting that up with you guys. And um, that was a big step in the right direction for us with our 16s, 18s, senior teams as well. And, and also Southeast Melbourne Phoenix with Ben Madgen coming along. Um, so yeah, look, I'll hand over to you. I've got a bit of a PowerPoint. We've got some questions, but we're just going to go back and forth. Um, and obviously we've got some resources that will be uploaded after the fact as well for people um, since we're not taking questions in a live format. So Thank you again for jumping on um, and I'll try and speak as little as possible and let you, the professional, answer the questions from our family. So thank you. Well, not a problem. <laughs> awesome. So um, as, as Jared said, I'm from um, Headspace Frankston. For those of you who might not know what Headspace is, is um, so headspace is the national youth mental health foundation and we're all about supporting young people aged 12 to 25 um, with pretty much any issue that any young person could be going through but the four main things that we focus on are mental health physical health education and employment support and support with alcohol or other drug use. Um, so we, we're based just in Frankston, just up from the Frankston Library. Um, and we have stayed open the entire time during COVID as well. Um, so young people can still come in, access, us, access our services in person. So they can sit down with a counselor. They can also come in and sit down with a GP as well. We have a full GP clinic at our center. Um, um, and yeah, so young people can come in and chat to us about anything that's kind of going on for them. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a pretty interesting time <laughs> in the past. That's probably, a, for lack of a better word, it's been an interesting time for everyone at the moment. Um, and it, it's been bringing up a whole bunch of different challenges, not just for young people, but for everyone as well. And people will be experiencing really different things. So I'm really happy that I've had this opportunity to be able to see what questions that, um, that people have had and to have a really good conversation about mental health. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you for that, Bethany. And um, yeah, it's it is a. I, I was lucky enough to to come in and meet you not long before everything kind of changed. And yeah. um, it is a, it is an amazing facility there um, in Frankston. Just you know, even even if kids want to just go and hang out, I don't know if they're allowed to do that at the moment. But when things start up again, just you know, it's it's a really really um, welcoming environment and a terrific place with everything you need under the one roof and you guys do a phenomenal job. So um, yeah, it, it is really terrific. And um, we'll, we'll launch into the questions if you're ready yeah, to go. I'll, uh, I'll go through the slides. So our first question uh, today is uh, sort of referencing, uh, it came from a parent, her kids are still exercising, um, but you know, it's going to get a lot tougher in the next couple of weeks, um, you know, trying to, stay engaged and stay locked in on their training and their sport and their school um, with, you know, the very real possibility of not being able to return to, to community sport um, and normal life until we get, you know, maybe we get a vaccine or until we really get a, a ha handle on, on this um, situation and, and this virus. Um, I guess how I sort of interpreted this question um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I sort of thought, what are, what are some tips or resources to help 
you know, potentially our kids and our families deal with that uncertainty from day to day? Yeah, um, COVID has put us in a really unique kind of situation. Um, none of us really have had experience with dealing with a global pandemic before. So there's no blueprint in what to do and how to deal with it. Um, and a lot of different feelings might be coming up throughout this as well, which is is really normal and not just for young people, everyone. And I found that a lot of people that I've been having conversations, I've started saying, how are you doing today? Instead of just how are you doing in general because emotions are changing so quickly. Um, in regards to the fact that people might be exercising now, but it might be really hard to to keep that motivation kind of going forward in, in that sort of area. Um, there's uh, like, it's it, when we feel the least like we want to keep doing exercise or movement or activity is probably actually when we need to be doing it the most. But when we're feeling overwhelmed or when we're feeling stressed or when we're feeling anxious, that can be when we have no motivation to continue to do that sort of stuff. So my advice or some tips or resources that are out there around staying active or, or starting to become active again, if you've had a little bit of a pause, um, the first one is around setting really small goals um, because you know, it's, it's much easier to motivate yourself to go for a 10 minute walk than it is to motivate yourself to go for an hour long run. So to do really small goals is a really important thing. Um, Monitoring your process is, is a good thing to do as well. So kind of tracking what you're doing because then you're going to start seeing the links between the physical activity that you're doing and the benefits of it as well. Um, if you have to be doing stuff that you enjoy, you know, not everyone enjoys the same sort of physical activity. Um, so you need to find what works for you and, and making sure that that is the thing that you're doing to stay active. Getting into a little bit of a routine as well can be a really good thing. A tricky thing to do at, at start, but it can be a really positive thing to be doing. Um, and also making sure that you're making the time to be doing this sort of physical activity as well. Um, if it's an afterthought, it gets a little bit um, confusing and tricky to to want to keep doing it. But if you're making the time and and putting the time into it, then it might be more it will probably be easier to keep a little bit of routine around there. So they all kind of link together. Um, there's a lot of resources around tips on how to stay active um, and they're all on the Headspace website. But um, at the end, there'll probably be a whole bunch of resources that Jared will send through to you all that people can click on the links to get this direct information as well. Yep, terrific. Thank you, Bethany. So, yeah, well, yes. Uh, he'll be mad at me for creating extra work for him. Spangler, yeah. <laughs> That's Spangler if you're listening to this, I apologize, mate, because yeah, you <laughs> sort of cut, cut together these two. Um, just double checking. I definitely hit record. Yeah, we're recording. All right, screen share. And I'll get to the second question. All right, ready to go again. Okay, so thank you for that, Beth. We'll move on to our second question. Um, how important is keeping active for our mental health during COVID? That's a really good question. And the short answer is very important. Um, <laughs> and it's not just during COVID that keeping active is important for our mental health. It's actually all the time. Uh, so physical health and physical well-being has really strong links to our mental health um, and has really good mental health outcomes um, from things like getting really good sleep or stress management, but it also gives our mood a boost. It gives us energy. It gives us increased concentration. So keeping important, uh, keeping moving for our mental health is really important to continue to do. Um, and like I said before, the best thing that you can do is to find the the thing that you enjoy to do so if that's running that's great if it's walking great if it's yoga great if it's stretching at home if it's dancing whatever it is the thing that you enjoy the most is going to have the most benefits for your mental health so yes keeping active movement exercise is super important for our mental health terrific excellent thanks for that 
Uh, okay, so this was an interesting one. Uh, obviously, we're in a situation here in Victoria uh, where we're, yeah, we're, 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 we're not quite uh, getting a handle over this situation. Um, we're struggling a little bit um, just in terms of, yeah, our management, I guess, of, of containing and flattening the curve and things like that. That's not the case in the other states. Um, they're all different. It's not a. It's not you know nationwide, and hopefully it doesn't become nationwide again. Um, so a big factor right now is that, yeah, a lot of our kids are seeing probably friends in regional Victoria. Um, you know, maybe even friends in other states back playing sport, um, which they're missing out on. Uh, what are what are some ideas you have to to keep positivity moving forward, even though our kids in a, are in a position just purely because they live in Victoria that they cannot to return to sport right now? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. It can be super super frustrating, and it's an emotion I've heard a lot throughout this that we're currently in a situation in Victoria where we can't return to quote unquote, normal activities or familiar activities when we're seeing other parts of our state or other states or other countries being able to do so. So it can be super frustrating to want to return to those things that make us feel good and that we enjoy and we see other people being able to do and we're in a situation that we can't do it just yet. Um, a lot of emotions can come out of that sort of feeling and not just related to sport, but um, you know, people have had to put holidays on hold. They've had to put events on hold. People haven't been able to see family or friends or celebrate birthdays or do all the stuff that makes our life really fulfilling. All of that stuff's been put on pause at the moment. So a lot of emotions might come out of that. People might be feeling um, a bit of fear or anxiety. Some people might be feeling sad. Some might be people like some people might be feeling quite angry or um, frustrated or um, there's also could be a real sense of grief at the moment as well. And I know when we talk about grief, we associate it to a loss of someone, um, but grief can be associated to the loss of something as well. And people might be feeling a lot of grief, not only for the things that they're not able to do at the moment, but for the life that they had only a couple of months ago that they're not able to have. So all these feelings can kind of be mixing around um, and it can be hard to stay positive throughout that sort of stuff. The first thing I would say is that if, if a young person does kind of talk about these emotions, it's really important for us to uh, like say that that's okay because it is okay. And if you're feeling those things as well, it's okay that you're feeling that sort of stuff. We want to validate those emotions. Um, nothing's more frustrating if you say that you feel really sad or angry or upset and someone goes, oh, well, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. Like then, then you feel like you're not being heard. So if someone does come up and say that this is what's going on for them, letting them know that those feelings are normal and important and, and listening to that's a really important thing to do. Um, and we really want to be looking at how we can keep a healthy headspace. It might not be about being positive all the time, but it's about keeping our headspace as healthy as it can possibly be. So some things that we can do for that is maybe limiting the amount of exposure to media or social media. You know, if we're watching the news cycle 24 hours a day, it can be really hard to stay positive when you get all this influx of information. Um, making sure we're doing things that make us feel physically and emotionally safe. Looking to our self-care things. And um, what might be tricky at the moment is that for a lot of people, their self-care technique is community sport. And at the moment, they're not able to do that. So looking at what self-care activities they can do that make people feel good um, and knowing the activities that make people feel calm as well. Um, and at the end of the day, if you feel like you need to chat to someone, the actually the most important thing that you can do is have a chat with someone. And that might be parents, it might be friends, or it might be a professional. Um, and if you want more information about this, um, Headspace has a whole bunch of resources around healthy Headspace tips. So things that you can do to keep your Headspace as healthy as possible, which looks at things like the things that you're eating, how you're sleeping, um, any alcohol or other drug use, 
how connected you feel, um, how engaged in life you are. And there's a lot of tips and resources about that sort of stuff that people can click onto after this as well. Yep, terrific. No, that's perfect. Thank you, um, Beth. That's really, really good insight. And um, yeah, certainly pretty topical at the moment for, for our kids and our families. So hopefully they can, um, yeah, if they're feeling that way and noticing those signs, they can, they can um, go and check out those resources, obviously. All right, we'll move on. Um, what tips would you give players, parents, and coaches in this time to help players feel connected to their teammates, even though the season has been cancelled? Yeah. Connection is so important. And from all the mental health resources and data and all the evidence that is out there, we found that feeling connected is one of the number one things when it comes to people feeling um, mentally healthy. And on the other side of that, feeling disconnected or feeling isolated is a really big risk factor to mental ill health. So keeping connections up at this time is an incredibly important thing to be doing. Um, what we find is a really interesting thing is that for a lot of people, their main source of connection is their sport club. It's their teammates. It's their coaches. These are the people that give advice and provide mentorship. And they're the ones where they feel like their community, you know. And so when that sort of stuff is put on pause, a lot of people can feel quite unusual because those normal resources aren't there. So at the moment, the, the actual safest and best way for us to keep connected with each other is online. Um, and while that might not work for everyone at the moment, it's actually just really the only way that we can continue to stay connected. And I know that um, FDBA have been doing a lot of really great things to try and keep people to stay connected, whether it be trainings online or, or these sort of forums where you talk about a particular topic. Um, but staying connected via online is an important thing for us to be doing at the moment. It can look really different. It, it can be um, you know, FaceTiming your best mate while you go for a walk. Um, in the Melbourne metro area, make sure that you're also wearing a mask when you go outside and you do that. Um, it might be um, doing online trivia together. Um, there's a lot of online board game things that people can do, whether they're using the house party app, um, whether you're um, using Skype or Zoom or MS Teams, whatever platform works the best for you um, and, and being creative with it. Um, and if you really wanted to put in a little bit of extra effort to feel connected, nothing makes people feel more special than getting like a letter or a package in the mail. And I know that feels like so arbitrary at the moment because it's such an old school thing to be doing, but really that's, that's a way to, to really let someone know that you're thinking of them and wanting to stay connected and, um, and making someone feel special as well. So there are a lot of avenues out there to keep connect, um, to keep that connection going. Although we're not seeing people um, physically in person at the moment. Uh, it's perfect. Thank you, Beth. Yep, terrific. Okay, uh, what are some signs to look out for, um, both for me personally, I guess this was coming from one of our members, um, but for my child that we may be experiencing stress or, or anxiety over the current situation? Yeah, um, and this is, this is an important question because I think um, me mental health has been spoken about a lot during, during the COVID-19 pandemic and People have been told to check in about their mental health and to watch out for it and to make sure that they're seeking help. But sometimes we might not know what that actually looks like or what signs or, um, or, or just things that might be coming up that might be showing that someone is, is having a little bit of a, a tougher time to, to deal with what's going on at the moment. First of all, it's really, it's really important to note that if you are struggling with it, it's completely normal and it's okay and there's resources out there to help you. But some tips that you might want to be or some things that you might want to be looking out for um, that might be a little bit of a, a red flag or um, some signs that someone might be feeling affected. Um, 
is if someone's um, motivation to engage in day-to-day -day activities, all the things that used to bring them a lot of joy, if the motivation to do those activities have gone down a little bit, um, if people's sleeping patterns have changed, so either sleeping a lot more or maybe sleeping a lot less. Same with eating patterns, if um, eating patterns have uh, changed quite a bit. Um, if someone is using alcohol or other drugs either for the first time or if they're using them more than they usually would. Um, if people um, are either way over exercising or if they used to be quite active, if they're not doing that at all anymore. Um, or if you kind of get the idea that they're feeling a little bit worried or they're feeling a little bit anxious or they've expressed those feelings. All of these might be signs that someone is going through some stuff. Um, I do want to clarify that if a young person or yourself has one of these experiences just once, it doesn't automatically mean that they've got a mental health issue. Just because your teenager sleeps in really late one day doesn't automatically mean that they have anxiety or depression. That's not how these symptoms work. It's more if um, you recognize that someone has got a couple of these symptoms if they're feeling like they've got a lot of like a lack of energy if they don't feel motivated if they're sleeping a lot more if they're talking about using alcohol a lot more if they've got a couple of these symptoms um if they're going on for a long time or if they're impacting day-to-day -day life that is when it starts to become a little bit of a red flag and a sign that someone might not be doing that well and if you do notice those things in someone, the best thing to do is actually just ask them how they're going. You might need to ask them a couple of times before you get an honest answer. But if you ask them how they're going and they say they're not doing the best, that actually just starts a dialogue and a conversation for someone to explain what's going on for them and to get them the help that they might need after that as well. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Beth. And thank you again for like clarifying that is really really important as you said like there are signs and there's factors uh, but yeah that connection i think that personal connection is really important um being able to identify and 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 really get um honest answers out of people and, and get them to open up to you that ability to actually listen to what's being said and 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 the sort of nature in, in which um it's being said is, is a big factor because you could panic um you know kids sleep in all the time our kids are growing every day um especially in basketball you know kids sleep a lot when they grow so you could see that and go oh no like that's a sign and maybe it's just a, a, the nature of, of um development and they're growing so it's good to know that you know there are signs, but we need to see sort of patterns and then we need to make that connection with people to, to really identify those things. So that, that's terrific. Thank you. Um, that brings us to the end of our presentation. So, um, and our, our official questions, obviously uh, being a pre-recorded meeting, we don't have any live questions as the meeting's going on. Um, but, but Beth, I think, um, you know, I, I speak on your behalf when I say that you guys are available. Like you said, you've been working throughout the entire pandemic pretty much nonstop. I know how busy you've been and that's why we had to pre-record this meeting. You guys are just flat chat and, and doing just doing an amazing job. Um, so if people do have questions from anything that you've said today, we'll make sure that, um, you know, obviously all the, all the website and all the contact details are available through the link on our webpage, our Blues From Home webpage and the interactive calendar that's a part of this program. Um, and obviously we will upload this um, on Monday night for everyone to watch. And we'll also uh, upload the resource, which is you've, you've answered each of those questions with links to specific articles. So um, we really appreciate your time and effort, again, building those resources and building that sort of Q&A for us, um, but also giving up your time this morning um, or what will be Monday night to um, to help answer some questions from our members. It's really valuable and, and you guys as a resource um, and I guess as a sort of a partner for us moving forward is just so important for, for our association and for our members. So we really do thank you and, and appreciate your time.
Not a problem. Thank you so much for having me. And if I could leave it on, on any one thing is that um, no matter what's going on for anyone, there's no problem too big or too small to reach out and ask help for. And there's always, always, always someone to talk to. So if you are feeling, and that's for the parents out there, that's for coaches, that's for managers, that's for players, um, no matter what's going on, um, chatting to someone to, to kind of feel a little bit better, there's always someone there to chat to. Yep. Hundred percent. You yep, couldn't be more right. And I'm uh, similar to you. I'm very lucky to have maintained employment throughout this. Our our staff did, um, and and I think everyone watching this tonight will have my number, my email, uh, Wayne's number, Wayne's email. Anyone at the club, we're all here to 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 have a chat or to talk or to be a resource if anyone needs it. And obviously, the professionals over at Headspace as well. So. Thank you again, Beth. Um, I'll let you get back to your extremely, extremely important work. And um, yeah, thanks again. We'll talk soon. Not a problem. Thanks so much for having me.